What's up, everyone? You are live. That's like my favorite thing. I got a very special guest today. I got Josh Feingebaum. Uh, what's the most fun accent to say it, your last name, Josh? I mean, it's, I think technically it's from, you know, Austria, Hungary when that was a thing. So maybe like a German type of accent, but it sounds creepy and weird. So usually I go with a hardcore Yiddish accent. If I right. can call him. Oh, I like that. Right. The real Woody like Allen Nebbish sounding. Yeah, yeah. The Woody Allen Nebbish. Exactly right. I love it. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Josh, thanks for joining us. For those that don't know Josh, um, I'll let him introduce himself. But the reason why I had him on is because he rapidly and quickly, uh, I think in the course of a few months, built himself a personal brand for B2B marketers here in Israel and abroad. Uh, very impressed with what he's been able to do. He took what many people are scared to do. Um, and in, from seeing from the outside, and we'll get into it, is he took the science of creating a personal brand. He literally just made it into a science by regular posting, making a podcast, and doing what's ever necessary. So um, I'm going to let you introduce and tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. My name is Josh Feigenbaum, the Eigenbaum, however we want to say it. Um, I uh, currently am a demand gen, the demand gen manager at Isolate, a B2B startup in Israel and Tel Aviv. I also uh, just finished a couple of uh, three years at Marketing Envy, a B2B marketing agency. So that's where I got started on doing a lot of social media for clients and then for myself. Uh, a lot of it started with I would have ideas for clients and they would be like, I don't know who's that ever worked for. And then I couldn't say me because I didn't I wasn't posting and I got started. And that's uh, that's where I where I got started about six months ago, I would say maybe a little less. Awesome. So for those that don't know, this is an AMA. Um, so uh, if anyone has any questions, feel free to throw them here. And if um, we don't have any issues with integration, we'll pull them up and we'll address any questions. All right. So let's jump in. So why did you decide, uh, Josh, so tell us a little bit about what, let's say, a year ago, what or if your personal brand looked like? My personal brand was maybe occasionally posting like a wisecrack on, on LinkedIn. Um, I wasn't super active on, for professional purposes on any social media. Uh, I was occasionally on Facebook. I was super into Facebook when Facebook was a thing that everybody cared about, like in 2011. Um, I was posting every day because I was in college, didn't have a job. Uh, but it wasn't like for professional reasons at all. Um, then I started working on social media at, at a couple of companies I was – uh, I had one company I worked at where I was helping franchisees with their social media, basically Facebook. And I was doing a lot of advertising um, recommendations for them. And I was doing some regular posting recommendations. But I wasn't doing anything myself. Um, and then I got a job at a marketing agency where I was writing social media for clients, but I wasn't writing it for myself. And a lot of the things that were risks that you could take when you're posting for yourself, you probably know this also, that sometimes you'll post something and you know that like there's a 50% chance that's just going to bomb and you're going to look stupid, but you want to do it anyway. I couldn't do that for clients, but I but I, there were things I wanted to talk about that I wanted to try. Uh, so I started doing it for myself. I actually posted, started posting a little bit um, earlier than six months ago. I tried, very, but I, I wasn't doing it right. I, I tried posting like twice a week what I thought was normal, what all my clients also think is a normal cadence. Um, or thought back when I was in So the explain, wait, what, what do you think? So look, it, it is my opinion. Uh, I think what, what most people do is wrong. It doesn't work, right? That's why most people do it. And people are tuning in here so they can learn about their, uh, you know, improving their personal brand with us specifically. Um, but what do you think specifically, um, like, what do you think that most people do that is wrong, right? The regular cadence. What so do you I think is that it. missing thing? So the way I, I phrase it is that find me a really successful LinkedIn person, like a, a LinkedIn profile you admire who's only posting like once a week. It doesn't exist. These people, you can't build a following if you only post once a week. Um, I think also there's a bias towards, we think, and I've thought this myself, where you think you're the center of the LinkedIn universe and that people are going to get sick of you. They're going to have like Josh or Yoel fatigue and start unfollowing you and blocking you and talking trash about you at, at meetups. And <laughs> Do you say that as if you did some experience with this, Josh? No, but like, there, listen. Once you get to the levels of like the Gary V's and the uh, you know the super like not that either of us are there, although you're a lot closer than I am. But there are like haters for every like influencer on, right. on every platform. No so people think that that's going to happen to them. 
it's not going to happen to you because you're not a Wait, porn. What's going to happen? What they're going to get haters or, or oh they're going to yeah people are going to like roll their eyes when they see your posts. I know I've had right. posts where people are just like uh Josh is posting about this again. We get it. Or didn't he post about this last week? Yeah, maybe. You know, you just can't care. I think a lot of people get get in their own heads when it comes to posting, and they think that they think it's like Facebook, right? Everyone knows people on Facebook that when they post a lot and you hate them, you block them. Because how many photos of their kids can you see? Right? right. Not talking about any family members now, but it might be. Right. Um, so people think that that's what LinkedIn is like. They're like, well, you know, everybody hates it when you post on Facebook, you know, three times a week, four times a week, five times a week. So why would you do that on LinkedIn? And it's a different right. game entirely. And I think people, once you like make that, I think I'm only saying this because I got started on Facebook and I think most people did too when it comes to social media. I freely admit, by the way, I wasn't uh, cool enough to be on MySpace in high school. I, uh, I missed that whole boat. What were but you I doing started, instead? Hmm? What were you doing instead that you weren't on there? Homework. I was a really good kid. And, and clearly right. not like just missing. I was not an early adopter of social media in any way. Um, right. I'm definitely not an early adopter of anything. Um, but I think, I think people started like just translate bad behavior on other platforms to bad behavior on LinkedIn. And it's not the same thing. And I think once, I think the people who have really done a great job on, on LinkedIn Dave Gerhardt's and you know all those types of people, they get it. They get that it's not the same thing and they don't act like it is. Yeah, I agree. Let's bring up our first question here. We have a few. Uh, all right, Chaim Esther wants to know, do you think the LinkedIn algorithm prevents that from happening? I think you meant, uh, Chaim, maybe you wanna elaborate if if we're misunderstanding your uh, what you're referring to, because he asked this like a minute or two ago. Um, I think this was specific, uh, I think he was asking about um, uh, like preventing people from like wanting, thinking that the LinkedIn, they're the center of the attention. Uh, the center of the attention or is he asking if it prevents you from being annoying to people because it doesn't show it to as many I think that's something, I think let's go with the center of attention. Let's, let's address both of them and Chaim, if you want to elaborate in the comments, you're welcome to. So I think, it, I think that's true that you're not the center of attention in the same way you are on Facebook. I think People who are or on other platforms, people who have curated feeds, it could be on Twitter, you might have a list also. On Twitter, everybody's gonna see what you post if they're online at the right time, right? Um, and on Facebook, if you've curated your wall, people are gonna see it if they're online at the right time. And I don't think that's how it works. Not that I have any like inside knowledge of, of LinkedIn's algorithm, but clearly your, your posts aren't being shown to everybody. Um, right. So, yeah, I do think LinkedIn does the algorithm does play a role in making sure that you can post every day without without um, people getting tired. Of you. Yeah, I, I agree. So I mean, he um, he elaborated here. Yeah, uh, right. Prevent people from getting tired of you posting. So I don't think people get tired. So I'll tell you what I have when I started doing LinkedIn lives three years ago when I was the first person in the world to have it. Um, and it was great. I, I mean, I had a lot of views. Everything was going great. And then after a while, going what happened? What I loved about LinkedIn Live is unlike anything else, that you get a push notification when we go live. If you're assuming you follow me, so I did lose followers in that sense. But I don't care if you don't want to see me live. That's your issue. I'm not talking to the people that get sick of seeing content. If you're sick of seeing content, then and my content, then you're not my target audience, right? I'm only talking about LinkedIn. I'm talking about lead gen. I'm talking about marketing. I'm talking about cybersecurity. I'm talking about personal branding. If that stuff doesn't interest you, and I see a lot of content that, based on what they post, I would assume that my content is isn't interesting to them. Then you shouldn't really care. Um, but I just think this is a human nature thing: is that we all want to be loved. We all want to be loved, right? And since we want to like, we want to be loved, and we don't like, we, we have such a fear of rejection since we're such human species that it, you know, I think you kind of just got to get over it. I think it needs to be learned. You need to learn to not care. Um, I mean, I kind of got, I've, I've gotten over that, or certain things happen in your personal life, and you just learn to, I just don't give a shit. And it, it's a really great way of going through life. Is I do what I think is best, what is right, what is moral, what is ethical, and what's great for you know good for business and my personal brand and what I enjoy. And if that bothers people, so be it. It's their issue. It's interesting you mentioned, issue. Yeah, sorry to interrupt, but it's, it's interesting what you mentioned about the alert coming on LinkedIn Live. Because I do think if, imagine if everybody who followed you got an alert every time you posted, then right. you would be a lot more careful, right? Right, yeah, and then, yeah. right. And then you would post right. once a week. Right. Exactly. Exactly right. But people don't see your, your stuff. And the people do. I mean, you know, it's funny. So I get all the time. 
like I'll speak to someone, someone will reach out to me, hey, I want to talk about LinkedIn ads, right? Someone from cybersecurity usually, especially. And I'm speaking to them and they go, uh, oh, hey, I've been following you for a while. I really liked your post last week about this and yesterday about that and we're ready and I, I want to talk. And I have no idea who this person is. I've never seen them. Uh, they've never engaged with any of my posts. So you should know, even though like you might say, what did you, what did you say? Talkers are the worst. Like my posts, my ego. I know, ego. right? So I just said, you know what I mean? Well, I'll, I'll give you a better. I'll give you. A, I'll give you a more fun example in a minute. Um, and uh, and I'm like, all right. Well, look, it worked. I mean, I engaged in the end of the day, right, to get more business. That's the end of the day. I really don't need influence or anything like that. I don't really care. It's just to kind of to grow business and to continue to do work and help as many people as I can, which is part of my personal mission statement. But what I find is, um, what I find is that a, a lot of people they're consuming your content, they're loving your content, they're enjoying your content. But what they're not, but they're not telling you. So don't worry about it. And for every like one hater, there's like there's literally ten thousand that are. You know what I mean? There's 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 a thousand that are loving you. I think my camera went out of focus. Like yeah, forward, it did. You focus. got you got blurry. Like you were in one of those UFO documentaries. Right. Let's see. What's yeah. Uh, oh, all right. Let's see. Uh, I'll move around and see if it fixes it. All right. Uh, wrong one. Yehuda Sunshine ass. The third to best last name, right? Sunshine after Israel and Feigenbaum. Sure. Uh, is, is there an optimal amount of posting, one per day? Question mark. All right, you hit this one first. I I try and post once per day, not including weekends. I mean, you can post on weekends. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just lazy on the weekends, and I don't I don't personally schedule my posts ahead of time. Um, I just found that I lose all like motivation after writing the second or third post in a row. I just don't care anymore about the fourth and the fifth. So I post once per day. I would. I think most people are it. If you can get to that that level, I think that's that's a good place to be. You should also hopefully have something to say, right? Everyone's a question is always like, oh, well, that's just the next question is always, well, what am I going to talk about? Or aren't you just prioritizing quantity over quality? Um, which is which is fair, but I think is an overblown concern in general. But I personally post one per day, once per day. And that's what the accounts I managed also at my last position. That's what I did also there. Excellent. Uh, I'm going to shut off my camera and try to turn it back on. Uh, yeah. See if that helps. That. One, two, yeah, three. You're still out of focus. This is great. For people who don't know, you all okay, this so is great. Much, Go ahead, film so it. much crap about my, my microphone and my camera. And everything my, went wrong. Everything went wrong the 10 minutes before the setup. And of course, the lighting, everything. The sound, there's an ambulance before we went live. Uh, this fills me with so much joy. You have no idea. This made my I'm so day. happy. I'm so happy. Yeah. Because I think uh, Murphy's, Murphy's Law came down hard on you today. And, uh, and I got such a good laugh at it that I think Misery Loves Company and I decided to join you. But this, this is, is actually really pissing me off. Anyway, we'll proceed anyway. Um, so yeah, one a day. Um, I say this all the time. I post Sunday through Thursday, right? Weekends in Israel here is Friday and Saturday. Um, I just make a habit of it. I enjoy it. I have like a queue of posts. I have ideas. Uh, you can post twice a day, uh, but I would separate it by at least four or five hours usually. That's what I try to do. Um, sometimes I post twice a day, maybe once a week. But for the Have you part, ever had like two very successful posts on the same day? Or do you feel like LinkedIn throttles it a little bit? So I think they do when they're close together. I have had two successful posts, but because they were kick-ass posts. But I think your question, if can I rephrase your question? Yeah. I think you're asking is do if you post close together, do they cannibalize each other? Yeah, also. I think I think I think that's more the right question. And my from my observation answer is yes, partly. Right. All right, sweet. What's up? Omri says, let's go. Yo, well, Natanel Goldstein. All right, hey, my camera's back. What's up? I literally just, um, how much value do you put on impressions? Is it a valuable metric? I, I think it means views. But uh, Natanel, we're going to address views on organic posts. If you're talking about impressions and ads, comments, and we'll correct course. So you want me to go or you want to take this one first? Dude, you can go ahead first. So, I want you, then I'll step in. Put it that way. I'll be a, I'll be a play host. I know I, it's hard. I, Nobody has ever paid paid their bills with impressions um, and impressions for a, a long time. I mean, I've never tried to be fair. <laughs> so I know. It's like, so I'll have you know, my post got ten thousand views last week. Um, yes. Here's three so, thousand posts. Or here's three thousand views. I'll take. Some yeah, and also not something I I would ever tell a client to show them that their LinkedIn's doing great. It's like, well, it got a lot of impressions. Usually, because impressions are based on the engagement with your posts. Um, if you're getting a ton of impressions, there's usually a ton of engagement, unless you're paying, right? So right. let's, let's, let's um, focus on organic. If someone has any question about ads, they can ask that too. We'll address sure. it. But yeah, go ahead. Let's 
So impressions, I usually, it's, it's nice for me. I try and view it as like a personal challenge to improve impressions, but I am measuring engagements, vit clicks, visits to the website, things like that when I'm, uh, when I'm running social uh, posts. Right. And when it comes to your personal brand uh, in general, so I spoke to someone on my team and he had like a, he had the same amount of views that one of his posts about SEO, so from our SEO team. And he was showing me the metrics and like the metrics, I'm like, none of these are people that we do business with. You know, they're like, <laughs> all like beta sales. <laughs> yeah, they're like, uh, it went viral from like some of his old connections when he worked at like uh, 888, the casino and these other, and those people that, you know, that, that, that viewed it or all that, those companies and a lot of the job titles, it was, it was probably like 25% were probably uh are kind of relevant i mean it was still significant so in the end of the day it's not the views right it's the quality of the views and the right so i mean uh if my mom watches this hi mom uh that view doesn't help my mother's view does help because she's the best i know she's i know she's gonna <laughs> now you got to worry about everything you say here going forward right yeah i'll, leave, right. I'll leave you to do the swearing the, thank you. Actually, it's an interesting topic. It's I have that on, on my list of posts I want to do about LinkedIn and the swearing. Maybe we'll. Oh, maybe we'll, let's uh, maybe we'll uh, talk about that. a lot on sales, right? Like, you know what? Uh, let's discuss. Let's discuss. Let's discuss cursing. Fine. All right. Go ahead. What's your opinion? So I only ever cursing started thinking about this, and I'm not a salesperson. I've never done sales. I've never run my own company. But I, I saw that Gong had their research that if, if you swear more on sales calls, you close more deals, and I just. That just struck me as uh, as missing the uh, cause and effect here. Yep. Maybe you're swearing more on sales calls because you're closer with this person, you're getting along better with this person, you're friends with this person, and that's why you're more likely to close the deal. Like, yep. you or you're more passionate, and sure. that's something. Or the, the salespeople that curse more might be more passionate, and so they sell better, and they know the product better. Or it means they're more assertive, and maybe assertive. There's a correlation between assertiveness in sales and being successful. There, the correlation and causation is total bullshit. I, yeah. uh, I think the year 2020. As you throw out any study that you read, you got to be extremely skeptical. Yeah, and I, I just feel bad for the poor SDRs who are dropping f bombs and they're like opening calls because they read this on a blog yeah, somewhere. What just did it was it's a marketing ploy, and I think most people see through that bullshit. Yeah, so I hope there. so. Yeah. Anyway, let's uh, so back to the question. We have a question we cut off to talk about swearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, but what's your what's your opinion about? Do you think uh, what's your thoughts about cursing posts? And what's and then I my answer is a little more nuanced, and it, it changes like every week, every month. So I think maybe like the the worst thing I've I maybe I've written bullshit in a post, but I even doubt that I've even written that. I'm not a big cursor in posts. Um, I just don't. I, I don't think it needs it. I think uh, Seinfeld right. has this, like when people ask him about why he doesn't like swear in his comedy, really. He's just like, listen, if it was fun without swearing, if it's a good joke, you don't need it. And if it's Correct. a bad joke, then I'll write a better one, right? Correct. And that's kind of how I feel about personally my own post. There are people who I think it does work for who can be a little bit like that's part of their brand. Um, but I'm just not that person. There, it reminds me of an Eminem lyric. He goes, uh, this is old school. This is like this is over twenty years ago. Is it? Uh, no, Will right. Smith doesn't have to curse in his raps to sell records. Well, I do. So f him and f you too. And there's this. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that. If you're selling because you're swearing. Like, who am I to tell you? Not I don't know. Swear? That doesn't work. It doesn't work. I mean, I, I mean, Eminem's a great because he's just he's a lyrical genius. Um, th that's really what it is. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. agree. I I think so. Long form video content, audio content. I think it's fine. I yeah. think if it's like very a short skit or text. I think it's inappropriate. That's my opinion. I don't think I'm right or wrong. This is just how I perceive it. I think if it's a short post, you should avoid it. You know, people like you know. Also, I think I think uh, the s the s bomb is is overly used to emphasize instead of. Yeah, I think you can find better adjectives that are that are better, more descriptive. All right, um, Chaim Messer, how do you integrate LinkedIn Stories with all this? I didn't get LinkedIn Stories. What? I mean, maybe I have it on my phone, but I mostly use LinkedIn from. Uh, it's only on your phone, man. It's only yeah, I know. I Meaning, it, it's like it could be that it's there, but I've never used it. All right. I mean, I've never looked at it, and if I got it, I definitely got it late because I checked for the first few weeks when it was rolled out, and I had nothing. I will say, as somebody who like consumes other social media, I don't care for stories in any format. Okay, so. fair. I love your honesty. Uh, Anyway, so uh, when it comes to building your personal brand, it's a very important touch point, a way that people connect. I'll tell you what I love about stories more than anything is uh, it's a different different people 
the people that watch stories and they click next, 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 they might not see your post because they've never engaged because they might be following, you know, a couple thousand people on LinkedIn. They'll be seeing it in your stories because very few people create stories. And the other thing is you end up having a conversation in private. So if you follow someone else, you can comment on their story and it can be relevant about them. And then it's a private message and you're automatically just created a private message. So it's wonderful for sales is actually watching other people's stories and because and commenting because now you're in DM and you're starting a conversation and then you can take it where you want. I hope that helps Chaim. Uh, your friend Hannah, you got a, you got a fan. Uh, uh, Hannah, what's up? I have a question. And here I got a, a fan too from a former Wadi War, War alum. All right, so I want to talk a little bit about your, uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, they can ask. I, I want to get more back to your journey. Um, so you didn't really get to, so right a year ago, even a few months, six months ago, you weren't posting, right? What inspired you, right, not regularly, right, right, right. Uh, what inspired you to say, you know what, I'm going to start posting regularly. And I think actually, before we get into this, let's also, I think you should plug your podcast because that was part of your personal brand. But what inspired you to decide to kind of like, you know, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and just build a personal brand. Like, what was it? So I, I got, I did spend a lot of time as one of the stalkers and lurkers on LinkedIn before I actually started posting. And I started seeing what the people who are getting the crazy engagement on their posts were writing. Um, and I really thought that like, it wasn't, it's not too complicated. It didn't see, it seemed to me that they weren't writing like this is, these aren't like the shakespeare's of linkedin they were just being consistent they had a good point of view um they defended it well um and they were controversial when they had to be but they seemed like really just you know like it seemed achievable it wasn't like trying to become like a youtuber where it's like maybe maybe it's much easier than i think but it seems like a lot more work um that was one YouTube's thing. a lot youtube's a lot more work yeah yeah oh my god it is i've, I've tried a couple times different topics yeah, YouTube it hard. seems like way harder than anything YouTube else. YouTube is very hard. <laughs> yeah, so so part of it was just laziness. I didn't want to try and do that. Um, but also, I saw the people who had their brand. Um, I also obviously realized as a marketer that having a brand is a personal brand is a good thing for my career um, long term. Not even like you know finding a new job, which I I did not entirely through LinkedIn, although I think it helped um, with the search. But I think long term, I want to be. Uh, one of those people who like people just know even if they've never met me and I think that's good for your career I think it's good for your point of view if you're trying to shape a, a topic on online um, so I want to give it a try and I, I started like I started following the LinkedIn um, posters who post about LinkedIn the people who are like really this is I mean I post about it too I'm obviously we're talking about it now I'm pretty passionate about it but I, I really started wanting to understand what worked and the last reason was I had clients. I had a lot of clients. I was writing for their personal accounts. I was writing for their business accounts. And it became very clear that the business accounts thing was just dying. Um, it's, it's almost totally dead now. If you don't like pay to promote your business, nobody is going to see it at all. Like the, the, right, the impression levels are insanely low. So I realized that I want to start posting on personal accounts for our clients. And if I was going to start doing that, I had to actually get good at posting on personal accounts. So that was mine. Um, so that's kind of how I got started there. What was the biggest barrier when you said had to get good? What skill or, or what did you what did you need to do? So first, I had to I had to write a bunch of posts that I thought were good that were that ended up not performing. I think that was like, and I, that's not what I would have told you at the time, but that's what ended up being the most important thing about getting better at LinkedIn was I had posts, and you probably had the sensation too, where you write something, you're like, this is gold. I am, this is going to blow up. Like if anything blows up this week or this month, it's going to be this post. And then like crickets, you get like three likes. One of them is somebody who you asked if they saw your post because you're embarrassed. Um, and I, <laughs> you know that look? I was like, hey, you see my LinkedIn post? Like, yeah, I know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> I've got that people, like that's a thing. That's a thing that people So I'll, I'll tell you what, I, I'm going to jump in here. Yeah. What I do is, so you, what often uh, inspires my posts are conversations and questions from clients. Yeah. So, and then what I would do is I would, uh, I would, I, then I can, then I'll say you inspired this post on our call and then I'll send it over to them. So I'll get one like, <laughs> yeah. so I was a little bit like sneakier about it or like I usually, maybe it's because you're a more positive person than I am. <laughs> I'm just more negative, but usually <laughs> the say more about me or about you, Josh. No, this says something about me. You're obviously okay. Like, I just want to, me, want to make sure you said broken. that, not me. No, no, this is me being broken as a human. But if a client did something that I thought was like, 
a mistake or told me to do something that I thought wasn't a good idea, I would I wouldn't write about it immediately, which is like obviously like uh, too obvious. Um, but I would like put it away and think about like, oh, the client asked me to send this email that I think is terrible, right? Um, and I didn't want to send this email. I have all these reasons I didn't want to send the email. I would turn those reasons into a post about how to optimize emails or something like that. Um, and I would use the inspiration the same way you just mentioned, but instead of like tagging them, I would deliberately pretend I wasn't talking about them at all because I was. Right, excellent. Okay, let's get to uh, our friend Helena asks. Uh, all right, I started LinkedIn ads, received zero ROI. Is this something you need to outsource for the tutorials that you recommend? Um, all right, there's there's an answer and then there's an answer answer. Uh, the answer is check your, I'll just, a few quick rundowns, make sure you don't have enable audience expansion on. That's usually uh, someone that just, just quote started LinkedIn ads. That's a mistake that is the biggest waste of money. That's basically means you say you pay for the LinkedIn premium calls per clicks, but you got none of the premium targeting. Um, and uh, you receive zero ROI. Check the demographics, the job titles, and the companies of people that are seeing them to make sure it's the right people. Um, and um, then what do I recommend? I recommend Helena pop me an email and I'll schedule, I'll give you like a 30 minute go over to give you some free tips. Um, any any quick things without seeing an account when someone starts a campaign, things that they screw up? I know there's not much we can add here without seeing any accounts. Exactly, the only thing I would add is the offer. Like whatever the offer is, if the offer is not strong enough, um, especially like you see this a lot of times with, uh, you know. Yeah, give an example. Like if you have, a, you know, if you're promoting a, a webinar with like a no name person in there, and you're like actually paying to promote it, um, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be, you know, it's not gonna convert as well. And people just, they understand that a lot of, not enough people understand this, but a lot of people understand that if they, when they fill out a form, they're asking to get called and spammed with emails, right? That's what happens. That's the, what they're signing up for. So the offer has to be better than the inconvenience of you calling them and sending them emails. And I think that bar keeps getting higher um, as time goes on. Right, agree. All right, we got one for you from Omri. Uh, hey Josh, uh, do you literally re do you literally write in their personal accounts, or you just send them the text copy for your post? So this depended on the client, um, but some of them um, was uh, was done like automated um, through HubSpot. Um, some of them was wait. What do you mean? Let's walk like, people through it because you guys, not everyone might have sure. the experience. I, I basically I used a platform that uh, let me get like you would connect. They would connect to it. I would log in, and then I'd be able to post from their platform. Uh, the the, to the per, is, to their personal profile LinkedIn. To the personal profile. The problem okay. with this is you can't comment. You can't do the whole link in comments thing uh, when you're doing it that way, um, especially if you're pro, you know scheduling it for late at night and you're not going to be online at, anyway. Uh, but you can't like pre-schedule a comment on a post that doesn't exist. Um, so if you want to drop a link in the comment, you really have to post live from the uh, from the account. So there were people that I actually logged into their accounts. And I just ran it like I was uh, like I was them. Got it. And then, but how would you manage that kind of relationship? I also probably know a bit more why Omri is asking, as he has some mm -hmm. clients of his own. How do you manage that relationship when you post, and then they would just follow up on the comments, and that would be their responsibility? So I mean, to be fair, like a lot of these people weren't start you know starting huge conversations, but when they did, I would I would you know WhatsApp them or Slack them or send them uh, an email saying, hey, you, like a conversation started here, some you should jump in. I didn't own like the whole back and forth between any, like if I started a war in the comments, that was their decision, how, how much they want to engage. But usually that didn't happen. You'd get like a, you know, your likes, you would get your, a few comments. Um, and you know, some things you could just say thanks for, you don't actually have to like, you know, follow up with the CEO of a startup to ask them if you could say thank you for somebody complimenting your post. Um, but I, I would go in terms of the relationship though, you know, it's it's not all of them will just give you their LinkedIn account right away, right? I think that's also something that really depends on the person. But when they did, it ended up, um, you know, I, I don't think anybody took back their LinkedIn uh, from me, certainly not in the last two years, maybe when I was brand new and did something stupid. <laughs> How do you define stupid when it comes to LinkedIn posting? Because well, we always talk about success. People don't talk about, you know, we do a lot of things that we feel are stupid because we're insecure. Yeah. But what actually is stupid that we, you thought was good enough to hit publish on no so there's things that like are obvious mistakes like you just got the messaging wrong or you misunderstood something this is something that like happened to me as like a junior like employee also which is why you would have somebody reviewing your posts usually before they went out or you know um but it, it's in terms of mistakes mistakes it's it's rare it's rare that you have a post that's like this is 
really bad. Um, you know, I don't agree with anything you wrote. Like, take it down. That doesn't happen. Usually it's, oh, we have, um, you know, an updated, like, video, an updated image for what you shared. Can you, like, reshare it with this image instead? Like, that's that's more common. Right, right. Got it. Yeah, yeah. I, I know what you mean. Okay, so uh, let's get, let's bring it back to the main conversation. If anyone has more questions, uh, feel free to drop them in the comments. We'll address them. Um, so building your personal brand. So you went in and you decided you decided okay, I want to build my personal brand. I want to find mm -hmm. other employment. And so you posted daily, right? Is that what you said? Well, you woke up one day and I said I'll post daily, or were you thinking about it for three months, kind of like when you know? Oh, like I I day? overthink all these things. I was probably thinking about it for a lot longer than that. Um, what's <laughs> anytime you see how long? Anything, how long? Josh, how long? I mean, it was probably something I wanted to do for like six months before I started. Like, like, and, you know, you make excuses, other things come up. It's not like LinkedIn has to be the most important thing in your life if you're a marketer, right? Um, uh, but watch what you say, buddy. Tease. I mean, it does for you and your clients, uh, but for everybody else, it could. Be. <laughs> but I, you know, there were there were always like reasons or like, but really the reason that I didn't get started posting was what we mentioned earlier, which is a little bit of a fear of looking ridiculous. Um, which are, which are, or fear, fear of spamming. And I really needed to see other people's success to really understand that, you know, you can do this and people will actually like it and not hate you for it. Um, right. And, you know, I, I still remember the first time somebody like sharply disagreed with something I wrote. I was, was it, you remember? I'm trying to remember exactly what it was. Um, it might have been something around email marketing. I think that's usually what I like, uh, or uh, or about uh, webinars being too boring. Um, but the first time, hey, someone were, disagreed with that. Somebody disagreed with that. I, I thought webinars were were overly salesy, um, and like people were tricking people to watching a sales presentation and telling them it was a webinar, um, right. which I thought was I didn't like. And people don't come back anyway. But I, I wrote about that, and I had a, a, a comment on a post about email marketing about uh, maybe it was about a newsletter. I don't remember the exact post, but I remember the feeling of seeing it and like just feeling like somebody stabbed me in the heart. Like my, it was, it was such a bad feeling. And I'm not, I'm not a person who takes, you know, criticism, you know, overly poorly, but I'm not good at it because I don't think anybody is. Um, and I just remember like having to calm down for like an hour. Like my heart was racing, it was weird. And now, I mean, that I still get that like spike of adrenaline when somebody's like, actually, you don't know what you're talking about at all. Like, I think everybody will. will I, uh, I can attest. I can attest to this. It's a real thing. You're I was, ready for like, war. I was like, I you don't know what thing. you do not know what you just walked into, my friend. That's yeah. <laughs> it's, but it's like some sort of caveman reflex. It's like, oh, we're going to fight. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's your lizard brain. Don't get me wrong. Right. Yeah. You, know, you want to throw down? You want to yeah, go down? Exactly what I get when I feel numbers like, aren't too salesy. What's up, Josh? Even, even when somebody is like politely disagreeing. Someone's like, actually, you could look at it this way. I'm just like, or you could not. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like you think it's terrible. Um, and then I have to be like, actually, that was a really respectful way to disagree with me. Um, and what did I expect? Right, but, yeah, but look, let's set some rules for people. Don't know. Yeah. I, in my opinion, I think if you disagree, you absolutely should. Read Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. And you do it as a way that you're adding value, not that you are dismissing or downplaying. Yeah, I think the, like, have you tried this instead? Or like, oh, it could work if you do this. Right. Um, right. That I or, or you also learned this in marriage counseling. I'm just going to throw that out there. You know, <laughs> this is good advice for everyone you speak to in your life. Well, I'm glad I'm getting all this practice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's free <laughs> for you and all. Yeah, our, great. All this our is free. all this is. This is just, yeah. <laughs> Wait, is there a sales plug in the end of this? I'm just joking. I was making a, a comment to your webinar thing. There's not. Uh, so you were, all right. So you, you get that, right? You get those comments, right? And yeah. you're like, oh, I hate that. And uh, right, you, you hate it. And were you, did you get over it? Did that slow down? Did, did that like kind of make you not want to continue posting? It actually had the reverse effect. I had this instinct of I have to post something else that people love <laughs> because I need that dopamine rush. I'm like very honest about like how this works for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. if you know how it works, you can use it to your advantage. Yeah. Either you're a victim of it or you can control it. Exactly. So like I know if somebody like if I have a post that doesn't do well, I used to this is also another flashback to when I used to post all the time on Facebook, um, you know, 10 years ago. If I had a Facebook post that like didn't do well, there was this feeling that like you have to post again immediately to make people remember that you're good at Facebook. They went, um, if I didn't see your shit, the algorithm didn't serve. You didn't get a lot of, and no one knows that you posted. 
That's true. Like if, yeah. if a tree fell in the forest and didn't make any noise, right? Uh, if it, no one was there to hear it, didn't make any noise. It's like that right. kind of thing. This is all the terrible parts about social media, and I'm actually a huge fan. But like one of the things is that when you have a post that doesn't do well, you don't feel great about it. It's designed to make you not feel great about it um, because it's designed to make you feel really good when it works. So when it doesn't work, I just I, I it made me want to post more. Um, and like I was basically just chasing, you know, approval. Like, you know, um, and if so I did, that, did that work for you? I'm it saying the, the chasing yeah. the dragon work, yeah. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. It's I'm very honest about my own like. No, yeah, yeah, no, I, I understand. I'm, we're being yeah. totally honest here. This is a, being honest is imperative. So right, so you so you'd actually you fed that. So I think a lot of people in the beginning, if they get the too soon too, too early on, they back down from posting. Yeah. But if you're a few weeks in. And you're just like, okay, well, I've had hundreds of comments that were positive, encouraging, or value adding. Okay, and I and I got one asshole. Okay, great. And if you can step back and compartmentalize, like get worked up, that's good. Respond, you should. And then been like, huh, I got a troll. <laughs> that's awesome. It's amazing. It's like level up. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like I'm no longer a white belt. You know? <laughs> it's like, it's yeah, like I have an opponent. Yeah, uh, right. That's it. I got haters. I got people saying. Did you see this this asshole? He said this and that. I disagree with him. You I know do what have I mean? This rule, by the way, though, about the where you do what? Me. Say it again. I do have an exception about where it doesn't encourage me to do more. Is if I have a video that I created that doesn't do well. I don't even mean like um, that it has haters. I mean like the video gets shown to nobody. That will just deflate my desire to make a video for a long time because it's too much work. It feels like more right. work. Uh, well, for maybe me. you're trying too hard. No, like any idea that you would have for a post, why not just you know? I always say. Take out your phone, hold it up, make a video. Like, you know what I mean? I just talk to you. I don't edit it or anything. That's why, like, lives, when we get to bring in people's oh. questions, there's that engagement. It's a little more, ooh, what are they going to say? It's not edit. It's not, you don't have to edit it. You don't have to cut it. There's no work involved. Right? And then they'll set it to no, an editor. No work for you? You're not going to edit this when we're done? Nope. I'm, I'm, an editor will. He's not going to okay. edit it. He's not going to cut it. We'll do snippets I'll, and we'll send them to you with, like, yeah. three to four parts but you know and he'll add like you know some graphics and things on the side but generally speaking no i i'm really when you have a conversation with someone i'm really against editing if it's a conversation you know if it's just you trying yeah. to explain your product of course you should edit it but if you're having a conversation i think the biggest disservice is people don't actually follow your thought process don't understand what you're thinking like you know we shouldn't like you know maybe you said something about like your insecurities and how you feel when you have haters in your posts like this is this is human real stuff and we're our human nature is to not share these things and to not expose ourselves to we have no idea who's viewing and who's watching this. Um, but that's exactly what people need to hear. People need to know when they want to beat themselves up because they got their first hater or or in general, first, second or hundredth, that they shouldn't even that they shouldn't worry about it. This is totally normal. And these are human, normal human feelings. And the question is, are you going to let it discourage you or are you going to bring that full fuel on top of your fire? hundred percent. Awesome. Yeah. We got a bunch of thank yous from uh, Helena says, wow, thank you. Amri says, thanks, Josh. Thanks, Yoel. Uh, Rachel Zalto, do you know who she is? Uh, thanks, yeah. Yoel and Josh. Interesting and entertaining. Uh, very cool. Yeah. yeah. Entertainment is everything. And they're also for content before. That, that's how you deliver it. I guess a spoonful of uh, sugar helps the medicine go down. I have a question uh, for you, if I can. Yeah, sure. I wanted to ask you nah. what do you think about the classic uh, be yourself business on uh, when people start posting content? Uh, because this is the most common advice is like, you know, just be your real self and like put out like who you are and like people will like sense that and be attracted to it. Are you, do you believe in that or do you believe in like modifying, like creating like a, a LinkedIn persona kind of? No, I, I believe, I mean, I'm totally, I'm raw. This is my personality. I totally yeah. believe in being yourself. You know what I hate though? This is a little side no. note. I hate when people say be human. I find those people are the least human people. Be human, the algorithm rewards. Be like, be yeah. human. <laughs> human first. <laughs> it's like, what are you saying? It's like you have to be a robot to say be human. Do you know what I mean? There's something to yes. that. There, there's something to it. Anyway, but yeah, no, being authentic. So like, I always say, uh, I get, I get comments often that people are saying, uh, this post is for, uh, not often, w once every five weeks. Uh, this is a Facebook post, not a LinkedIn post. Mm -hmm. Like, leave this for Facebook, and I'm like unfollow you're a loser it's like you know what i mean it's like yeah i don't care <laughs> it's like, it's like, no, we are, like still the boundaries of things that like people don't talk about politics on linkedin right, right. Like, thank god thank god thank god yeah like fingers crossed LinkedIn is my filter 
So what I like, I don't go on Facebook seldom, yeah. right? Uh, even though we're streaming this on Facebook too. Um, but what it is, it filters out the politics, the anger, the the cat pictures, uh, just obnoxious things, the things I don't care to see. That's why I like LinkedIn. I would like to see that personal stuff, the productivity, the things you learn in your personal life. You know, even some like if you tie it into something, um, milestones in your personal life could be, you know, a birth, uh, uh, your kid getting married or an anniversary. You know what I mean? If you tie it into something greater, if it's just a selfie with nothing there, I, I'm not interested. But if you do, I would like to celebrate with you if you want to celebrate with me. You're just putting a picture of uh, your baby is nothing. But if you want to add, you know what I mean, so-called like a, you know, added value with Vartora, so to speak, I think that'd be great. All right, Haim, here, here you go. He, so yeah, specifically, how do you feel about politics and LinkedIn? Bro, it's like, don't do it. Like, just stay okay. away from that business, yeah. For, first off, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a little deep on this. I'm going to go a little deeper. One, um, if you see politics on LinkedIn, whether you, um, you should unfollow them. This is my, obviously my opinion whether you agree with them or not, and even more so if you agree, you should unfollow. One, I think seeing a position you disagree with is always better. And also, you're more inclined to click like on a political position that you agree with. And then what's going to happen is we'll see in other people's newsfeed, Yoel liked this political position. And then a lot of people that agree with me, OK, cool. And they're like, I don't want to see this in my feed anyway, because it's not why I'm on LinkedIn. And then half the world that would disagree with me, right? Always half the world disagrees with you or more. You're never in the majority. Uh, at least I'm not on social media. Um, <laughs> if it disagrees with you, they'll just think negatively of you, unfortunately, because people are so tribal, because since we're talking about human nature and posting. So I recommend not just don't post a politics. I recommend anyone who is posting, even if they're your best friend on LinkedIn, I would recommend you unfollow them. Some harsh stuff. I didn't. I told you. I'm yeah. harsh and wrong, so yeah. But, mm -hmm. but on Facebook, continue following them. You want that politics, do it there. You can like and comment all that stuff all the time. But on LinkedIn, you don't want people to know that people aren't interested in your personal opinions. Uh, and by the way, like I might follow you, man, as an expert in B2B, and I have no idea what your politics are, and I don't care. And, and you if you get yeah, your you politics right, I don't give a shit. And even if you're a great influencer and ex, let's like Hollywood or something like that, and they give their opinions, it's not going to change how I believe or how I think. So on this particular thing, and I'm just saying, why am I listening to you about politics? I follow you for marketing advice or tech or sales or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't ever understood that. Anyway, that's too much. I also think, obviously, like, what are the three things that you used to say in the workforce? No uh, no sex, no politics, no religion. Yeah. So I think the, those that's fair. I think faith, faith, but not specifically, like, religious, like, do this or that. I think faith is fair play if you know how to use it properly in LinkedIn. And often yeah. in, inspiring and productive. Agreed. Your friend Sharon's got to turn you on. What's up? Or Sharon. How Sharon. do you pronounce that last yeah. name? Yeah, yeah. Sharon, um, I'm going to say, this is embarrassing because we worked together for two years. So I'm going to say Nkawa. Nkawa, that's four vowels in a row. That's, that's I'm pretty gonna, cool. I'm going to stick with that as the correct pronunciation. <laughs> yeah, I think I, you got it wrong because you're supposed to say who is or what is, right? <laughs> <laughs> what is Nkawa? It's like, okay. Uh, we, don't work, we don't work together anymore. So if, we, uh, if she takes offense, it's fine. <laughs> I think people need to know your personality a little better, <laughs> but I'm sure, but she, but she gets it. That's cool. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so, so back to your personal brand, right? You want to find new work and you mm -hmm. post it daily and you decided after six months of saying, I should be posting daily. I should be doing what other people are doing. I started posting daily, right? Yeah. At what point, once you started posting daily, did you say, you know what? This isn't enough. I need to do a podcast because no one else is doing a podcast. So it's not that nobody else is doing a podcast. No, was an absolute, yeah, I was hoping that was sarcastic. I was like, really? Are you like not like paying attention to the podcast? <laughs> 60 millions of, there are dozens of us. Um, so, <laughs> no, so I, I wanted to do a podcast in general for a long time. Uh, I listen to only a handful. I don't, I don't have time to listen to, I don't know who's listening to a dozen podcasts. I know people do. That's crazy to me. Like I, people have really long commutes. Yeah, and I know. But other than that, I don't get it either. Like, I can listen to, you know, 20 minutes here or there, but I can't listen to, you know, I can't follow podcasts like TV shows. I can't binge them either. Um, maybe with the exception of Conan O'Brien's podcast, which I love. Um, but I, I wanted to create a podcast, an idea for a long time to do a history podcast because um, I studied history and I was super passionate about it. And I finished my master's and I was like, well, I don't have any outlet for all my, you know, wanting to study history 
I should, you know, create a podcast about books or, you know, I don't know what I was going to do. I had no, it's just a concept that I talked about for a long time. I was like that guy who was like working on a novel. It's like, yeah, I'm, it's really coming along, but like I wasn't doing anything. Um, and then I had the idea for the podcast of just interviewing uh, people whose work I liked um, in marketing. I, I don't, I'm not part of a community of historians. Um, I tried to be on Twitter. It was disastrous. They are the worst. Um, you think like, it's like the exact opposite of like uh, LinkedIn. It's like everything is just politics. So I tried to, um, I started just reaching out to people whose work I liked and asking if they would be willing to be interviewed for 30 minutes. I really, I was walking home from work and the idea for the name of the podcast came to my head, Beer to Beer Marketing, which I think after a long day of work sounded much cleverer than it really is. Like now looking back, I'm like, that's not so clever. But at the time I was like, this is No, cool. it's cute. What do you mean? It's, it's great. Cute. It's cute. I loved it. It's cute. I literally it's so much better than all these other dumbass names for marketing podcasts. Well, though they're playing the uh, like the SEO like podcast game, a lot of them that have bad names or apparently bad names. But I I, I literally ducked into a cafe back when those were still a thing, um, in between lockdowns, and I I re I like got a logo made. I registered the name. I started setting everything up. I worked for an hour and a half straight, just setting as much up as I can, getting five or people to do the things I couldn't, like my uh, intro, which I'm. Um, you know, it was just delightful to have like a professional voice just introduce me. I love that. Um, so I set that all up and I started just sending out emails and talking to people and really trying to learn as much as I could. It's, it's not, I want, I do want it to start being more of a discussion and a dialogue. Uh, but I was, I was interviewing people like a CMOs at cybersecurity companies who have a lot more, like it's a giant waste of time for me to talk is what I felt like. I just wanted to learn as much as I could and then upload the audio and, and turn those into audiograms and little videos and use that as uh, content for LinkedIn also. So, and, but really the real reason I created it uh, was to learn how to make podcasts. Um, same way I, that, that's the best way just to learn how. So yeah. a lot of people, so I, we just did a, a cybersecurity marketing, uh, a LinkedIn masterclass for cybersecurity marketers. And a lot of people are like, oh, I don't get stories. I'm never going to do it or whatever. When we, when we did our day about stories and I was like, look, do a story so you know how to do the story, right? We're all going to do it together. Like just, just do a story, do one with the picture, do one with the video, tag someone. So when you need to do one with it, you know how you're not learning, do it now. So just like learning how to do it is just, you know what I mean? In literally like 30 minutes, you learned a skill and you learn how people interact about it. So as a marketer, you understand how it's being used. Yeah. You at least got to understand it, even if you're not using it just to do it once. Exactly. And that's what when people are like, oh, how's the podcast doing? I'm just like, podcast is fine. I'm not like blowing up the charts with or anything here. It's right. not hard to right? Wait a minute. You're not telling them they're like, yeah, it means it's going amazing. We're doubling week over week. You know, you know. Oh, I tell that to the guests when I invite them. Right, right. You guys, like, oh, this is blowing up. This is views, like, yeah. it's like, wait, including bots and purchase views. Yeah. Like, have you heard of Joe Rogan? I'm I'm not saying I'm at his level, but uh, right. I'm just interested. Saying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's where the line yeah. happens. He asked me to come on his podcast, and I, I said no. Down. I was busy. I, was I busy. said no. <laughs> it was during a sober October. I can't drink beer in sober October. Come on. No, it's ridiculous. So, um, <laughs> but it's 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 helped me learn outreach, like cold outreach to guests, um, people I don't know. It's Amazing. helped me learn editing. Like that's where the real value was for me, and I'm sure, you know, this podcast, however long it lasts, another year, uh, two years. Ten years from now, I'm hosting a podcast that sounds a lot better than the one I have now. It's got That's a real right. microphone. That's the idea, really. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing a bunch of comments on Facebook that isn't populating in StreamYard. All right, but we'll get to that in a minute. Sorry, Facebook people, we'll address it. Amanda Israel, my sister-in-law. Uh, white tip of content is more likely to boom, and what is more likely to bomb? Oh, I like how she played those words. Mm, That's good writing. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Do you need a copy? You need a copy? You need a uh, copywriter? I have. I have a. Not currently, but I'll <laughs> keep it in mind. Um, no, so for me, I really like. I don't want to give like a, a a fake answer here, where I know what content is going to do well. One of the reasons I explain to people why it's valuable to post every day is because you don't know. If we you knew think about, yes, yes, that that's the. I think that was the best sentence today. Yeah, that was awesome. it. Yeah. That was that was the sentence is because you reason why I, I, I'm going to use this. I don't know why. Like, it makes sense. But I, I you've you've you said it. It was you said it so well. It happened. Correct. The you don't know why I hit 100 likes 
back when like it was much easier by the way like oh for my something God. my size because they, whatever we're not talking about the algorithm yeah, right now but the first thing that happened it wasn't such a great post i didn't think i was expecting i think everyone plays this game in their head like how many likes do you think it's going to get on this post like you played this like over on their game when you post like i think this could be a good one i didn't think this post was going anywhere i had 100 likes and i was just like what just happened and that's when it really clicked for me it's like oh i don't know i have no idea i just have to start posting and then you learn, you basically build your own like experience and you kind of get a sense of it. But I don't have like an answer of like this content is going to work better than anything else. Like you just got to post. From, someone from my team, she messaged me earlier. She said her post today had uh, so far after uh, a few hours, eight likes, 11 comments, and, like 45 views. She's like, what the hell is up with the algorithm today? Oh, <laughs> She's I like, like, it's like, I'm getting good engagement. I posted two hours ago. I got good engagement, you know, and it's just like, and. No one saw the post. Like, like the algorithm to me has become like personified. Like I imagine as like a person who's like trying to stop me from being popular sometimes. I'm just like, can you please? Like I'm trying to talk to something. Like do you mind like showing this to some people? Right. But, yeah. I, um, but I, I don't know. I, I, I don't have a good answer for what's gonna bomb. So there, there isn't. Bomb? There is. You don't know. What's gonna bomb is not posting. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. You're, if you're not, if you're not posting, it's they're all every every day is a bomb. Uh, not a bit more. Let me check out some. I saw some Facebook comments. Uh, Ellie Sheva, Katie Hudson says, "What are the first things uh, you suggest to someone who is getting very low engagement on posts?" Oh, actually, so I guess we kind of addressed that. Yeah, in a sense, cool. right? So the the very first thing we suggest is is just keep posting, and eventually you'll get better engagement. I mean. I mean, you just yeah. keep eyes, some will, some won't. And yeah, and there's like the classic hacks about like, you know, the, uh, you know, have the, 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 um, the main point before the see more and use white space. But like, those aren't going to save bad content. Those are just going like, to amplify good content. By the way, that white space thing is, is a pretty big deal. It's a, it's a way time. bigger deal than people realize. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think we should talk about that. I wanted to say that to, to someone that's interesting that, um, by way, I mean like double spacing sentences. It's so much easier to read. It really is. I remember when that. I start. Yeah. You, and your dwell time is longer, so then they're going to serve it to more people. I will read a very boring book, but I won't read like four lines of text pushed mushed together and. and Thank you. It. Yeah. I won't do it. I was like, I, "What is this? Like three question do. marks in here?" And I'm like, "No thanks." No, I see. Um, it. You want me to quit my job? Like, come on, people. Let's let's go. Right, let's go. Yeah. Let's do it, baby. I agree. All right. Thanks, Alicia. Uh, okay, Helen asked the same question on Facebook. I guess she asked there first, I see, then LinkedIn. Amanda also asked again. She asked that too. Okay, that was weird how it came in. All right, she has another question. What is considered good engagement for people that are in Gary V? Uh, any post. Just, dude, it doesn't, it's not about engage. Okay, so I want to address engagement because you engagement i've learned is radically overrated there's there's something to it engagement what it does is shows that other people are agreeing and want to add to a discussion that you started which means that you have some authority right in a sense um but really what i look is on linkedin is like who's viewing my post you can't see what individuals but just to kind of get an idea because i've learned after doing this for years is that like everyone that i want to be following me is for the most part, because I started early on LinkedIn, it was really easy to get followers. Um, and um, so all that matters, I don't care how many like and engage, but like I said, who saw them? And like a, a half hour ago, I talked about, you know, someone would have reached out to me and he said he saw my post, he's been following me, and I have no idea who he is, and he never engaged. So it depends, like just keep putting out content. People are seeing your stuff. People are consuming your stuff. And what's going to happen is even if they're not the target audience, but they know who you are, if they know people that have the solution that you have, they'll recommend you. So, yeah, and she's, she's talking about numbers specifically. Um, and so you started your podcast. You brought people on. And I know the goal of your podcast, was it to, to build a better brand? You said it was just to learn it how to do it. It was a combination of networking. Um, I'm also not – I mean, not that events have been a thing for a year now. But I am the worst person to try and network at a network event. I just I don't want to do it because I'm like this like persona where I'm. It's very easy for me to talk one on one. I get in a room full of people. I just want to like grab a diet coke, go to the corner, and wait for it to end. Just put me out of my misery. I can't deal with like introductions to like seven different people at once. I'm terrible at it. I know it's like a skill, and people work on it. It's not for me. Um, this, but I could totally reach out cold to the CMO of a company I respect and ask them to be in my podcast. That just feels better to me.
Um, and it feels like a more normal discussion. You know what you're going to talk about. I get to send them an agenda for the network. Is imagine if like before you have to talk to somebody in person, you can be like, this is what we're going to talk about. Is that okay? Like it's like, it's weird and you wouldn't do that because that's not how people communicate. But for introverts, it's just much easier to have a conversation. Right. So you're an introvert, right? I, yeah. I, we didn't know agenda, right? We barely know. <laughs> we just got on. Exactly. Our agenda was, can we get the, your technology to work? <laughs> yeah, and hey, I wasn't the one with the blurry camera 30 minutes ago. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, you're going to pull out one, the one thing I got going on. That's fine. Yeah, I'm not going right. to I'm not going to comment so, on your lighting or anything. So my lighting, you told me, was fine. <laughs> uh, I lied. I just set you up to look worse uh, than me. I really am. I'm gonna like invest in like a 500 shekel ring light. You're gonna like, and you're gonna invite me out to your podcast, and you'll be like, "Oh yeah, you're gonna see there's no video, just audio, and then you'll ambush me," you know. Um. So yeah, it was a combination of networking, uh, wanting to learn how to podcast, and um, you know, that was that was really it. And like also trying to learn just general things about marketing I didn't know, um, or you know, get perspectives that I couldn't get from um from my clients or from other people. So. It was uh, in that sense. It was it was definitely a success. It wasn't a goal to like build a brand the same way LinkedIn posting was to build a brand because LinkedIn, you know, I'm reaching orders of magnitude more people on LinkedIn than I am through my podcast, uh, which is fine and normal because the people who listen to the podcast are spending 30 minutes with me. People reading my post on LinkedIn are spending 10 seconds. Um, but it, it wasn't it wasn't as big of a branding play. I'm using it for branding, right? I'm repurposing it on LinkedIn when I can. I'm tagging people. It's not like it's not part of it, uh, but it wasn't the only reason that I did it for sure. Awesome, great. Um, if someone else has any questions to ask now, because I think it's a buffer between the questions and the comments, because we are going to finish up soon. Um, all right, so you, you build your so you post it daily, and then you decide to make a podcast, and that was for you to learn and for your branding. You want to be seen. You want to find better employment, so on and so forth. Got it. Um, and uh, would you say it's easier than you thought? Like looking back, you're like, huh? I didn't expect that to work so well. I think it was, I think LinkedIn posting, I don't know if it's easier than I thought, but it gets much easier, much faster than you think it's going to be. Um, I know people ask me like how much time That's why we called it rapidly. That's why we said it's rapidly yeah. easier. It's much easier and can happen much quicker than you think. It's, it's amazing how fast I can write a post compared to like agonizing over a four line post, you know, six months ago where... <laughs> And part of it is maybe because I know it doesn't matter as much and I, I don't feel the weight of the world when I'm posting. But part of it is just you start thinking in LinkedIn posts. It's like the matrix, right? You just like like you start no, I, I do that. coming to you in like LinkedIn post format in bro tree, like into your head. Um, <laughs> as long as I don't start talking that way in real life, I'm not like stopping sentences and like pausing for like a minute. Um, but it, it becomes much easier to write much faster. And when you can write faster, you can post more. When you post more, like it just builds on itself. It snowballs. And that's what right. I think has really surprised me the most. Awesome. Great. Uh, if we can leave, if you can leave people with, let's say people want to build a personal brand. They want to. They've been sitting on the sideline. They're, they're who you were half a year ago. Uh, they're a lurker. Uh, they're a stalker. They're all the awkward things, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, they, they'd like to say, I want to... I want to be where Josh is and what Josh did for himself in six months. I want to be able to do for myself just to build a, a small personal brand on LinkedIn. What do you recommend to them? Make it like a commitment to post every day for two weeks, no matter what happens, no matter how hard the first four bomb, just, just do it for two weeks. Um, and you'll see a, like one of those posts will do well, probably, or better than you thought. And you'll start realizing that it's a, it's easier than you think. And it's, um, it, and it gets easier. Uh, so that's like consistency, I think, is the biggest thing. Um, the other thing is, and you know, for me, it's writing things um, that comes really easy to me. But I know there are people who are better with video who could pull out the phone, like you mentioned, like you can do, um, which I'm not as good at. But you know, tr you don't have to only write like you know white space text. There's no rule that says that has to be your brand on LinkedIn. If you're really, if you're really good at other things, or if you have um, a business that's more visual. Um, or ideas that are better expressed visually. Like, I don't know, like do whatever is easier for you. If it was easy for me to do videos, I would have done videos. It just wasn't. Um, uh, and, you know, that's really it. And like, don't don't take it too seriously. Like, it's fine. Like, it's, it's fine, really. Like, nobody cares. Oh, yeah. From the, the end of the day, yeah. nobody cares. Nobody cares. Just host daily and don't take it too seriously. Like, nobody knows what I have. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, Josh, where can they find you? 
They can find me at beer to beer marketing.com, which is where all the web uh, the website where I have. I'm going to, I'm going to that plug that, that in the comments and see if I do it. Um, and not the, you know, not spelled out, just a digit. Beer to beer marketing. Um, you can also search for the podcast, beer to beer marketing podcast, wherever fine podcasts are, you know, offered everywhere. Um, Spotify, Apple. And, you know, reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm here, obviously, somewhat frequently still. Um, and, yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for this LinkedIn Live AMA. Um, I'm your host, Yoel Israel of Wadi Digital. Thank you, Josh, so much for joining us. I hope we were able to help you build your personal brand rapidly and easily. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to send uh, either Josh or myself a private message. We look forward to engaging with you on LinkedIn. Thanks so much, Josh, for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me.